Welcome back to another roundtable. My name is Adam. I have Rusmin. Hello. And Victor. Hi, everyone. And today we're going to talk about Maple Tree Panasia hot yeah. stocks. Uh, is it one of, one of the more popular REITs yeah. in, uh, in Singapore? And I think the last time we talked about a REIT was CICT, Capital yeah. Land Integrated. Yeah. And some of your comments uh, were asking about MPAC as well, or Maple Tree Panasia. Yeah. Mm. And we thought we'd cover it and let's do kind of like an update or a review of what's happening with MPAC. Um, and why your share price has come down actually. Yeah. Yep. All right, so just a really quick overview of Impact for those who don't know, quick overview of the assets. Yeah, so Impact, I think they own assets like uh, Vivo Cities. Uh, mm-hmm. I think this is uh, known to every Singaporean. They also have this uh, prime asset, uh, Maple Tree uh, Business uh, Park. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I've just been there with Adam, I think, yeah, uh, at the, we Google were the Office. Google Office, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I was so impressed with the assets. It was huge, right? Bigger yeah. than what I thought supposed to be, right? So these are the two main crown jewels that they have. Um, and then, of course, they have uh, M Tower. It used to be in the Alexandra area. Uh, and then they have uh, Maple Tree Anson, right? So, and then subsequently, of course, there was original asset from Maple Tree Commercial Trust. And then they have merged with North Asia. And they actually brought in uh, new additional uh, assets like your Festival Walk in Hong Kong is also one of the very good malls yeah. uh, in Hong Kong I've been there also they yeah. have that basically it's the Vivo City of Hong Kong okay yeah okay. you can put it that way yeah. but I still think the Vivo City of Hong Kong is Harbour, Harbour City <laughs> that's, 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 that's a different opinion from him yeah so Harbour City is solid right so but that asset doesn't belong to Maple Tree Pan uh, Asia and okay. of course they also have like you know Chinese asset like your Sand Hill Plaza uh, Gateway and of course they have Tokyo uh, Korea and you know, all sort of like in, foreign in basically in, in East yeah. Asia right in East Asia so that's why they are called as uh, Maple Tree Pan Asia Pan Asia yeah. alright so uh, that's post merger um, so I think it's unit price has come down quite mm. a bit quite re- I mean recently yeah. uh, how much has it uh, dropped uh, recently I think it has dropped to as low as a dollar and 30 cents at the time of this uh, recording okay um, and in fact before the merger it was trading at above two dollars, two dollars, yeah. yeah, and then it came down slightly at dollar seventy cent, eighty cent, hovering there. And since the merger, thing just got worse. So it's almost that. like, yeah. a, I guess, almost forty percent drop. Yeah, yeah thereabouts. Yeah. I think. I mean, yeah. my math is not the best. 30, 30, 40 <laughs> percent. Yeah, uh, arithmetic is not the best. But anyway, so uh, this is a drop since post merger. Not so good. And of course, with mm. the pressures from the macro environment, interest rates, and everything. Yeah. So um, maybe you can dive in uh, into why it's. It's unit prices come on so much just re- uh, recently. Yeah. Okay. So I think if you look at the global macro factors, interest rate is one of the big contributor, right, yeah. to the cause of drop across the board. I think REITs in Singapore, most of them, uh, whether you are best REITs or lousy REITs, all of them drop okay. Okay, because of the higher interest rate cost, right? And this actually has been seen with their le- latest uh, quarterly result, first quarter, and then subsequently second quarter. I think we saw that their gross revenue, net property income all has gone up, okay, largely because of the uh, merger that happens for the first quarter. And the second quarter, you see that the growth has kind of like narrowed down because of the full quarter contribution. Um, so, but if directly, if you look at the DPU for first quarter or second quarter, both of them drop, mm. all right? So first quarter drop, DPU drop about uh, 12.8%. Second quarter, which they just released uh, last week, okay, mm-hmm. um, they dropped about 8.2%. So on the f- first half basis, DPU overall drops about close to 10.2%. Oh, that's Plus a big thing for income investors, thing. yeah? Yeah, so I mentioned about interest rate, is, which is the me- main big drag, because when the merger happens, their debt now cost has become higher. And then secondly, all right, one of the reason why they attributed to the drop was the higher utility cost, right? So energy cost has gone up, and that started since uh, Russia, invaded Ukraine, right? And then, you know, the whole energy cost started to go up, right? And so that affected everybody, right? So even CICT is actually feeling the pinch from there. Um, and so far, I think the cost has um, flattened out this year, almost a year. Okay, so I think that pressure will ease off unless there's another shortage or energy costs start to spi- spiral up again. Okay. Right, so the other factor will be the Forex. Okay, so Sing Dollar has been very strong. Mm. I'm happy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for the REITs, they, especially those with uh, foreign source uh, 
income, like yeah. the assets are outside of Singapore, they are feeling the pain because you look at their Japanese asset, which contribute about 10% of their portfolio. Mm. Um, you know, when you <laughs> translate yen to Sing dollar now, now. I love going to Japan. I love going to Japan. But you bring it the other way. Yeah, <laughs> and it's going to be painful. And yeah. that's what they're actually experiencing. Even want has dropped mm. uh, against uh, Sing dollars. Uh, likewise for their renminbi. Mm. And um, yeah, Hong Kong dollar is fairly stable because it's packed to US dollars. So those uh, Forex actually affected that. Okay, they do hedge it, but you know, when it comes to foreign source income hedging, typically on the very short term basis, right? And even over the long term, once the rate started to, like the Forex exchange rate started to drop, you will see that coming up. Okay. and affecting the DPU. And that's what we are seeing with uh, Maple Tree Pan Asia. And that's what's caught the so this, those are the three main reasons uh, for the cost of drop interest rate, higher rate, okay, and then basically you have a higher utility cost and then followed by weak, weaker uh, the foreign, foreign stocks income, yeah. stronger yeah. sing dollar, let's yeah. put it that way. All right, so yeah. these, these are the three reasons, basically higher expenses and Forex, right? So yeah. I think one question could be, I mean, see, if you ask me, higher interest rates, higher energy costs affect everybody. Yeah. It's not exclusive to impact. Mm. So other REITs, other regular companies have the same issues as well. So would you say, I mean, in my opinion, I would think that it's because post-merger, because of these East Asian, North Asian assets yeah. that have kind of like been a drag on on it, the REIT. Because of that, you have the Forex uh, risk. Yes. And then, um, I mean, I don't know how well these assets are doing over there. Because yeah. maybe you would, you later, later, later on, you can like kind of like compare the Singapore portfolio to, you know, the foreign portfolio and what each portfolio is how, how they're doing as well. And then maybe they could give you some insight yeah. of, uh, you know, is that the reason why this read, I mean, this is this the reason why this read is not, they're not doing so well right now and the DPO has come down? Yeah, so for the merger, I think we had done this uh, merger discussion before, all right? So I was I was quite against this merger. Mm, yeah. I don't really like it, but it's almost like a done deal when they announced it. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, um, because Maple Tree Commercial is still a very solid asset with a local uh, uh, asset, right? Yeah. There's no forex risk. The moment they took on this uh, asset for the sake of growth, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which I don't understand because the existing asset itself can actually grow organically, you know? You don't need to acquire assets. Sometimes the asset like Vivo City, they can really squeeze out so much uh, reversion, positive reversion over the years uh, is is quite impressive. Even for Maple Tree Business uh, Park, those are good asset. Okay, so since the merger, then they actually brought in a lot of uh, moving parts. All right, Forex is one of them, and then now you are being forced to own, uh, you know, Hong Kong assets. Which you know, if you are you just want to stick to local Singapore assets, you know, now you don't have the choice. Mm-hmm. But when you hold Maple Tree Commercial Trust, you are forced to divest. So this uh, uncertainty, I think a lot of them are, is a decision made by the manager, right? So I think, of course, the macro is out of our control, but it does affect them nowadays. Even as an investor, when I look at uh, Maple Tree Pan Asia, it's a lot more volatile than the last time Pure Play uh, Maple Tree Commercial uh, Trust, yeah. okay? So if you look at their uh, reversion, uh, in terms of occupancy, uh, I think it's quite healthy across the board. If you look at MBC, its occupancy is actually at about 96.8%. Vivo City is about almost 100% committed okay. occupancy uh, and other Singapore properties so about 98%. Festival okay. World also is fully or well occupied, right? Just that you have to take on that forex risk and it's in Japan and Hong Kong, all right? Mm-hmm. And then of course Chinese property uh, have a lower uh, occupancy, right? So generally the occupancy as a portfolio is about 96%. If you look at the um, trafficked right in the malls like Vivo City is one of their biggest assets um, it's going very well right shopper traffic is still below pre-pandemic level but you know it's coming up soon right it's almost full recovery soon I think we can probably see that hopefully by you know next year mm-hmm. um, and then tenant sales has way exceeded the pre-covid level right mm-hmm. so for festival walk is still a drag right because uh, Hong Kong China only decided to open up late last year right mm-hmm. so Singapore actually opened up one year earlier, mm-hmm. 2022. That's why you see uh, recovery in terms of tourism is a lot faster and traffic, uh, tenant sales, everything kicking a lot faster versus Hong Kong. So Hong Kong, there's still a lot of recoveries to go, okay, for them uh, because both sh- shopper traffic, even tenant sales are both below the pre-riot level. Right, that was in the second half of uh, 2019. Yeah, so if you look at uh, other metrics like the 
tourism figures, I think you can actually, uh, we will show it there, okay? So in terms of reversion, I think this is one of the things that I look at, uh, because if you look at uh, Maple Business City, uh, they have signed lease, new leases, uh, 19 of them. I think that on the first quarter basis, uh, you can see that the reversion is about 4%. Vivo City is about close to 8%. Mm -hmm. So basically these are the new leases that expire and they renew it, right? And that have a positive rent reversion and all this will have you know, good impact in the next few quarters to come because you manage to sign at a higher, uh, renew at a higher leases. But their festival war in China still dragging down overall. Again, okay. it's a pan Asia asset again, right? So okay. that is currently dragging down. Uh, of course, that doesn't show up in your net property income and net revenue because, uh, you know, when you sound, renew some of these leases, uh, you only kick in the, the impact will only come up, show up in the next uh, few quarter as this rent uh, start to kicks in, right? So, mm. but even then, I think festival walk in terms of gross revenue and net property income on the quarter quarter basis is holding up, it's increasing. So it's been quite resilient. So it's more like a recovery play if you are looking at Maple Tree Pan Asia now for their Hong Kong asset because they've just opened up. Yeah, so that took time, take time, so, right? And some of these negative leases, they actually signed it, uh, according to the management, were signed before the pre-COVID level, which okay. is higher. Mm. Uh, so now, because of the high rent, uh, and it just opened up, they have to actually renew some of these leases at the lower rent itself. Yeah, so on overall basis, uh, Singapore rent reversion assets are actually coming very strongly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's some, some of the reason partly could be also because they signed this lease during the pandemic, which is uh, lower, okay? But you can see that the local assets, Singapore assets are very solid, yeah. right? There's no currency risk there. Right? What I think dragged them down is really their China and Hong Kong asset, which is the North Asia <laughs> portfolio mo mostly come from there, okay? okay. so. Because of that, you know, ne negative rent reversion also, I think people panic and that caused the share price to decline quite significantly. Mm. Yeah, so now it has reached, I think, uh, $1.30, mm. okay? Almost to the cost price that I bought. <laughs> <laughs> like one. Yeah, so yeah, at one time, I think Maple Tree Commercial was doing so well. It was it doing was very well. It yeah. went up to yeah. almost as high as like 240, 250. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One so of the now best performers I back down. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think the North Asia assets also also actually balloon the the debt inside uh the Pan Asia. Yes. Right. Yeah. So if you look at the uh leverage ratio is about forty point seven. If you compare to CICT, uh, actually it's quite similar. CICT is about forty point eight. Mm. Then in terms of the interest and the coverage, right, the average maturity, they are uh, quite close for both of them, right? Uh, I think because of the because now MS actually increased the reach leverage ratio to fifty percent. Yeah. Right. They still can stretch, right? Uh, but then if they were to go to fifty percent, that's very very stretch, right? Mm -hmm. Then that's if if the interest rate were to keep going up, then it's going to be affecting them. So so I would say that actually there's they actually give them uh, quite minimum room to actually acquire new assets, same as the CICT that uh, we used to say, right? But the the thing is that between these two, at least we when you look at Maple Tree Pan Asia, they seems to have a more shareholder friendly type of manager, right? Because if you look at the track record of the manager of uh, Maple Tree uh, in the past, like the commercial, what, what they basically do is they do a lot of preferential offering, right? Mm -hmm. Which it's only like 10% discount, minimum dilution, and they, they, they issue at a higher price. So they don't, your, the existing shareholder don't get diluted significantly, right? But if you look at um, CICT, they, they tend to do rights rights issue when they- No, it's doing OEO now. Yeah. yeah. So they have a track record doing rights issue for CICT, right? So so when you look at these two, uh, you must also, you don't, you don't know whether it will happen again or not, or whether you, the event of rights issue, because when rights issue happens, right, it's very dilutive and you need to subscribe. So if you look at these two manager, uh, you know that, okay, Capital Land, right, at CICT, right, there's a chance that, you know, they will also call a right issue if anything happens, right? Mm -hmm. But your Pan Asia, they tends to have a track record of like uh, doing preferential offering. So so you, you must know like, okay, if you buy CICT, right, there's a chance that you need to have extra money to for the rights. If you buy uh, Pan Asia, right, then uh, may, there's a less probability, this still happens, but less probability, right? Yeah, but, okay. Um, so what they have uh, committed, I think based on what the management said for mm -hmm. Maple Tree Pan Asia is that they are not looking to raise equity funding, even though they are currently leveraged stands yep. at about 40.7%. Uh, they actually, in fact, looking to divest some of the asset that they have, like yep. the Maple Tree Einstein, the office asset, if they have offer that is above the fair value, okay. Okay, at least fair value or premium. Okay, so right now, I think I don't know whether there's gonna have any deal for that, but if they manage to sell some of this asset, that will help to reduce their debt level. Because during the Maple Tree commercial era, I think the 
leverage ratio was actually a lot lower than 40%. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So with this merger, things are a lot more stretched. You look at their interest uh, cover, it's almost as uh, three times, largely also because of the higher uh, interest rate environment. And then uh, the all-in weighted, weighted cost of debt also has gone up because of the you know, rising rate environment. And they also have actually fixed most of their loans from I think 72% last year to about uh, close to 80% now fixed. Mm. Right, that's for average uh, tenure about three years. Okay, so financially they are still very strong. Um, but I think what we can be assured is that I think the management are not looking for equity uh, yeah. raising, right? So that will be the last option they look at. Okay, yeah. so that's something that I like this management. It's yeah. just that when they did announce this merger, I feel quite sad yeah. about mm-hmm. it because yeah. it used to be one of those top list of quality REITs in my yeah. Then yeah. we say they're very good, yeah. Yeah. very good REITs manager. I can right? yeah. forget yeah. about yeah. it. But now, because after this asset, the no- merger of North asset, now I have to put this down, drop so a few level down. Sort of like a, <laughs> instead of an S tier, now it's a a A O B tier. <laughs> yeah, maybe you yeah. know you have triple and yeah. d- d- Before that, we were Bruce <laughs> was praising this manager, you know, yeah. very well. You okay. know, very yeah. good track record, good capital raising, and all this. Yeah, stuff. but what's done is done. I think there's no way that they're gonna go back to that. Yeah, of no, course. Yeah. Old playbook. All right. So now you are being uh, whole forced to hold some of these North Asia assets. Okay, which I don't really like it. But what I think they have done now, they intend to do to reduce the interest rate pressure is that because they have Chinese asset and they traditionally I think in the past they don't really took on a lot of Chinese uh, loan because of the higher rate environment in the past but now with China it's actually going opposite of the US right so they are reducing the rate Ch- uh, US is increasing the rate and now they're going to convert some of their loans in Hong Kong dollars which at this stage I think Hong Kong uh, floating rate is about the benchmark rate is about I think 5.7 over percent so with additional 1% spread from the bank their cost of funding is very expensive in Hong Kong that's why they are intending to swap over some of this uh, Hong Kong debt to uh, Renminbi mm. and they do have uh, Renminbi asset okay, which about up to 10% and at this stage they actually managed to swap over some of this uh, Hong Kong loan to actually reduce that interest uh, pressure so that also offer them a natural hedging they don't really need to take on like you know uh, forex risk for their loans itself okay so there's still room for them to do it uh, but uh, again that is going to be kept at least maximum I think 10% of their Chinese uh, asset Okay, so there's at least there's some plus side, you know, coming from that angle itself. Okay, so because okay. Hong Kong now is a bit detached from uh, China, okay, but they are still not fully recovered yet. Okay, so by right, they should be in the loose monetary policy, but they have to follow uh, US. Otherwise, okay. the depegging will be as very stressful. All right, I mean, when it yeah. comes to REITs, I mean, all anyone invest, invest in REITs, they are looking for dividends, DPU. Yes. So to, to kind of see DPU drop, uh, like you say, eight percent—the most recent quarter—is is not a great thing. Because I mean, thing, yeah. interest rates can go up, expenses can go up, but if they ma- can maintain the DPU, it's great. I mean, when share price comes down, they maintain the DPU. You can buy more because you know the DPU is is super stable. But this is this is something like oh, it, mm. they can cut the dividend, uh, and that's not a good thing. And it, it seems like it's because of all the North Asian assets that's putting more of the this this kind of like a drag on the yeah. entire read. That's why the DPO has come down. Is that is that what your opinion yeah, is? Yeah. But even but let's say if without the North Asia asset, mm. I don't think we will get the price today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So it's a different yeah. I mean it'll be a it's different not a good thing, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. The price it drops until solo today also partly because of the North That's Asia. That's true. Okay. So I guess someone watching this they they had it's an opportunity they, they could look at it as an opportunity. Yeah. Uh, and look at it maybe as a recovery play in a particular yeah. in this REIT. Yeah, I don't yeah. think these problems are going to be uh, structural. I, we don't know how long the interest is going to last yeah. so mm. that is a big question mark I think but what we know is that currency it, it's just a temporary right I mean mm. it, it, now the weakness in the str- the strength in the sing dollar may last for a while you don't know when they're going to expire yeah. we're going to last uh, but it's a volatile currency always up and down so maybe next year we are seeing a different situation and that could benefit uh, Pan Asia okay. yep. in, in the other way around so yeah. I think if you look at the valuation now they traded about 0.72 times uh, price to book. Okay. Right. So if you look at Maple Tree Com before they merge, right, they used to trade at premium. Mm. Right. Mm. And North Asia's uh track record is they always trade yeah. below the book value. At a discount. Yeah, at yeah. a discount, right? Okay. Yeah. So now you got these two asset match up, right? But if you look at zero point seven two, right, um 
it's a sort of like a new chart already. you don't know whether you will mm. trade back to one time book or more because you can't like, it's a different read altogether yeah, correct, now correct, you can't yeah, use yeah, a historical yeah. basis yeah. Yes. to look but, at it but also it. because of the North Asia asset that's why you know maybe some people don't want to own North Asia right that's why they sell off the, the thing it also does give the opportunity if if price get really attractive I mean now it seems very attractive because it's traded below the uh, COVID but the COVID that was a uh, MCT <laughs> MCT right? yeah. and now right so so yeah, so at the price to book basically yeah. now is about zero point seven two. I think seven seven two. seven five seven two. Seven, yeah, 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 they're about okay. Yeah, depending yeah. on the price that we yeah. look at, I think the yield will comes out to be about um, depends on what DPU they use to yeah. calculate the current uh, yield. I assume let's say full year financial result, uh, twenty twenty four. Okay, which is going to be end next year twenty thirty first of March twenty twenty four. Uh, I assume that the DPU get cut right by ten percent. So you're assuming it's like gonna it. fall again to be yeah. conservative? Um no. To basically fall from last year full year, right? Okay. So the which is year. about nine yeah. point five cents and then now I'm gonna take a haircut of ten percent. Mm. Uh, that will comes out to be about eight point six cents. So based on the eight point six cents, I divided by the current share price at the time of this recording is about dollar and thirty cents, and that will give us a yield of I think six point six yep. uh, percent. Mm. Okay, so historically, I think Maple Tree Commercial Trust always, I think, reached the highest that they ever go is always six percent yield. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. so now it has breached that yep. six point five percent. How about North Asia? Yeah, uh, North Asia is traditionally is a lot higher. Yeah. Okay, so I think it was like usually about seven eight percent. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, there, so yeah. they are probably averaging up. You know, converging yep. that. So even with that higher yield, I think you are looking at the uh, six point five percent percent yield is actually quite uh, distant. Yeah. yeah. So you can just average the two use and roughly get that that, that percentage. Huh? Mm. Okay. So yeah. so I mean that's the valuation, it looks really cheap. But again, it's a different read post merger. Uh harder to value nowadays because you don't have the historical basis. Maybe you can take a like a comparison of both and kind of like average e, both e, out. Is is that is that you mm, could work it out? I that don't way? know, but I think uh if you just purely based on you, I think then about the assets are still about sixty percent in Singapore. Yeah. Yeah, so you can kind of like, you know, weight it as well. Weight it yeah. and maybe um, do a risk premium and maybe mm. add 1%. So instead of like a typical 6% where, you know, last time when I used to buy MCT with 6% yield, but that, that's that's a kind of yield hard to get. I think yeah. for most people, you can get 5.5% is a plus point. Yeah. Right. So now if you add on 1% risk premium for their Hong Kong and Chinese asset, that all comes out to be about six point five percent, which is now mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. so at the dollar yep. and uh, thirty cent. Again, um, the risk premium really depends on the interest rate environment also. And what we know for sure is, of course, interest rate will not stay where it is today. Mm -hmm. Although a lot of people are expecting that it will stay for a while, but remember that interest rate can fall almost overnight. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Look at some prime. Look at uh, twenty twenty. Yep. Right. So it has happened many times in the past before. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think uh, now a lot of bad news on Maple Tree Pan Asia. That's why I think the share price has come down for a reason. Okay, yeah. so I I believe you own some you you ho you own yeah, a, a, a own. impact yeah. as well. So I'm biased discount. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> again, no recommendation to do anything. Yeah. I mean, uh, we're just doing our sharing our research, uh, Rusmin especially because uh, you own the you own the REIT. Yes. Um, so knowing this at this valuation, uh, it's come down. You know, you're back to square one basically. Yeah. What would you do with your holdings? Um. Yeah, I'm basically still holding it. Uh. All, of course, I still hope that they 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 demerge. You know. <laughs> 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 and then I don't have to take on so much risk. Very low no probably. I don't know. It won't it won't happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what I will be doing, of course, now at this stage is just keep on holding it because over the last. I think eight years, was it eight years? Yeah, 20, yeah, eight years, almost eight okay. years. I've been collecting a lot of dividends, right? Yeah. Growing dividends, and then until recently, it started to drop again. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I'm still happy, and I think I make quite a lot of money from the dividends alone. I think yeah. at least half of the capital yeah, is okay. back, all right? So, uh, but if it got worse from here, I mean, at this current price, because it's still near my cost price, I won't be adding, but mm. if it's like, drop even more, let's say 7% you, 8% you, I'll be more than happy to add, actually. Okay, what if someone yeah is new to this they don't have a stake in it um, how would you consider impact because it's yeah. it, it looks cheap but yep. then again it's 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 a question mark yeah it's a big question mark right so i think most money usually made is when the risk then there's high uncertainty okay right? yeah, <laughs> if this was so. a very uh, high certainty then the prices usually won't be as it is right so uh, for people who I think if you don't mind owning a piece of uh, have a 
uh, Vivo City Maple Tree Business Park, right, which is a great asset in Singapore and have some little exposure in uh, Hong Kong, mm. right, and China, Korea, right. So that this Maple Tree Pan Asia may suits them. Okay, so mm. again, you got to do your own research, uh, and the yield is actually quite decent. And of course, uh, you may compare against something like oh, interest rate now is like in the US almost five percent. It's not attractive, but bear in mind the interest rate doesn't stay there. Forever, okay. Right. Mm-hmm. But the what REITs can offer us is, you know, usually for at this current stage, I think Maple Tree Pan Asia should continue to deliver at least six uh, percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think the good thing is these companies still have a uh, uh, riding the recovery of the the uh, overseas assets, right? So mm-hmm. if the overseas assets recover, then probably you'll just re up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's a catalyst over there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're banking on the recovery. Of, of those uh, foreign assets in yeah. a sense. So while collecting the U. Yeah. At the same time, there are risks because we don't know interest rate, whether it's going to continue to go up or yeah. you know, stay I, how long, I how mean, many years. For me, the yeah. question would be, yeah, it, I'm getting 6% plus yield, but what if they continue to cut the DPU? Yes. Because yeah. uh, if they maintain it, great. I just hold on and wait for the recovery. But yeah. if they keep cutting it, yeah. that becomes a different yes. qu- question altogether. Yes. So yes. I, may, I may not like that. Those are yeah. the equity risks that you'll be taking on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's so, why we're your... your that's why you have to split your your yeah. your purchase into three three trenches. Right? Okay. Right. So if you are interested right now, it's supposed to be the first one, not like everything yeah, okay. go in at one shot. Right? Yeah. yeah. Because anything happened. Okay. Right? Yeah. All right. So pretty decent rev- uh, valuation, pretty reasonable in a sense, but then there's like you said, uncertainty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like, whether you'll revert back yeah. as compared to the previous Maple Tree commercial. All right. So yeah. a lot of considerations when it comes to this read and uh, unfortunately it's one of the best in the past, but now there's a lot more to it's consider. Still good, you know, still it's good, yeah. still pretty. You know, yeah, it's okay. just that the moving part is a lot. <laughs> a lot yeah. more to, to, yeah. to consider. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so is there anything else you want to share about Impact? Mm, yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's quite comprehensive as well. <laughs> so if any questions about Impact, feel free to ask them in the comment section. Of course, you can email there. Email them. Don't, don't ask the relation. Us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you might like, like asking Rusmin, I don't yeah. know, <laughs> and what you think about it. Yeah. Uh, of course, put them in the comment section. If you like this round table, hit the like button. Always tell us you. I mean, tells us you're doing a good job. Of course subscribe to our channel many more more tips coming out and we'll see you again